everybody? Good morning, everybody. Oh, great. That's great. Get your hymn book. We're going to turn in the hymn book. I had something else completely and totally different picked out this morning. Um, it's a song called, You Get a Line and I'll Get a Pole. And, and the preacher said, nope, nope, Ronnie can't do that. That always makes me cry. I said, okay, I'm going to do them. Don't beat your mama with a great big old stick. I started thinking about it. I said, nope, nope, nope. Can't do that one. That makes me cry. So instead, we're going to sing a song called When We All Get to Heaven. Get your hymn book, turn to page 673, and stand and sing it loud. Sing it like you mean it, okay? Let's go. Come on. Thank you. I appreciate you singing out. Last first service, I had to take the microphone and go out and find people to help me sing. I'm just, I'm, I would say I'm joking, I'm lying. But appreciate y'all singing out. That sounded really good. Let's go to the Lord and pray, if you will, please. Our Father, we come to you today, this morning, with a thankful heart, Lord, that you give us another privilege, another opportunity to be in your house, Lord. We thank you for your many love, uh, your much love to us, and your many gifts to us, God. We can't thank you enough. We pray, Lord, you'd be with us in this service as we go forward. That somehow, some way, your name would be lifted up. That you would get glory and honor out of everything that's said and done. But we pray, Lord, that people would be blessed. We pray, Lord, that there's someone here that's lost without you, God. We pray, Lord, that you would come down and touch their hearts. Soften it, God, with the word that uh, our pastor is going to speak to us, God. Please say that was closest to hell, God. Forgive me, Lord, for I failed you. God, help me to do the best I can at all times, Lord. And for your honor, for your glory. God, we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Baptist Church. We are tickled to death that you're here. And uh, these fellows, uh, if uh, you're visiting with us for the first time or the first time in a long time, these fellows want to give you a a uh, information packet and all that. So if you're visiting with us for the first time, first time in a long time, would you lift up your hand and uh, get these fellas' uh, attention as they come down the aisle? And uh, we sure do appreciate that and uh, appreciate you being here. Let me uh, ask you to look in your bulletin, look on the back of your bulletin, and uh, there's a few things I just want to make note of. Uh, First of all, uh, don't forget this evening, uh, Brother Andrew Mosteller will be preaching. Uh, it's, uh, he announced his calling a few weeks ago and a couple months ago, and uh, we uh, got him on the schedule and all, so he's going to preach this evening. And uh, you come out, you support him, and uh, encourage him in the Lord. Also, uh, take a look at the uh, other things there from uh, needing help with the nursery. 
Um, we uh, were talking this morning during the first service, two of the most important things that uh, ladies look at when they first walk into a church and they're visiting for the first time. Two most important things, statistically speaking, is the bathrooms and the nursery. That's it. I, I, I mean, I know y'all look like, really, preacher? Yeah, that's really the truth. And uh, they've done study after study uh, about it. And I know that sounds crazy, but it is. And uh, the men they, they study, they look at the drapes and the, all that stuff. No, they, they don't. They don't. I don't even have a clue what men look at. But uh, anyway, but uh, that, the thing is, is that they want to know that it's a safe, caring, and loving environment for their child. And uh, we have that, and uh, but we need some more helpers. That's uh, why we're asking you if you can uh, uh, help us out with maybe one service a month. Uh, we'd sure appreciate that. Uh, also, we uh, for those of you that a lot of times I'm asked the question, well, do we do background checks and all of that? Yes, we sure do. Everybody that has anything to do with kids uh, goes through a background check. Uh, and all and must pass that. So help us out with that. Also, uh, we need help with the bus ministry. We need help with the uh, yard sale that's coming up on June the 1st. If you've got good, used, working things that you would donate to us uh, so that these kids can sell it, uh, and uh, all, we'd sure appreciate it. And uh, do what? Tim said you can donate good, used money. That's the best kind of yard sale stuff, ain't it? I never thought of that. If you got a brand new $100 bill and want to donate it, and you say, well, it's brand new, take it out in the dirt and step on it a little bit, wad it up, and then turn it in. Good used money. <laughs> They'll take it. You wouldn't turn it down, would you? No, he wouldn't turn it down. So uh, anyway, but uh, if you've got good used stuff uh, that way and you don't feel like uh, having a yard sale yourself, it's ironic. My wife and I were talking about it. I was talking to her. I was doing most of the talking. <coughs> Yard sales aggravate the fire out of me. You have 35 cents on something, else I'll give you a quarter. Or you have $5 on it, and uh, this I'll give you a dollar. A dollar? Come on now. I paid 125 I got a dollar. <laughs> Amen. Let the teenagers sell it. And uh, let them get the aggravation factor. Uh, other than that, you can look at the other things from uh, May the 22nd will be uh, our Wednesday night meal. Uh, Wednesday, May the 29th, we'll start back the uh, breakout session. Once you look inside of your bulletin, you'll notice the insert this morning. Now, here's what we're going to do. Um, not this morning, but next Sunday morning. Take this with you. All I want you to do between now and next Sunday morning, unless you feel led to this morning, you can drop it in the offering plate, but is to pray over this and see what the Lord would have you to do. Um, we, we um, In all honesty, that bus is already paid off completely. We did not finance it or anything. We just simply took the money out of our savings account and paid it. But what we did do was we took that from the building fund money that we'll eventually use to build the Family Life Center around back. And we want to pay ourselves back so that we're on track. This is an eight-month commitment all, is all this is. This is not into next year. This is just June 1 through December 1. Eight months of, of paying above your ties toward uh, paying that off. The goal is $10,000 a month. We made that first payment uh, this past uh, or this month um, already. So we're just starting in June. And uh, if you can give toward that above and beyond. If the Lord tells you not to, then guess what? Best thing you can do is obey God and don't do it. Uh, if the Lord tells you a certain figure, then you do that. But I want you to pray about it this week. We'll put these back in the bulletin next Sunday morning, and we'll ask you uh, to drop that in the offering plate uh, during the second uh, go-around. So um, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to give me a call, and I'll be glad to answer them. 
uh, I just don't want you to think that we financed it. We did not finance it. We just paid it through the savings account. We just want to pay ourselves back so we can keep on track um, with the uh, Family Life Center and all of that. If you have any questions, like I said, give me a call. Other than that, uh, take a look inside of your bulletin, and uh, if you have any questions about that, speak to one of the staff. All right. Who had a birthday this past week? Anybody have a birthday? I know one person did, and I know a young lady in the back did, and I think the other one is not here. All right. Anybody else? Hang on, I'll, I'll save. I'll save the two young ladies till last. Miss Monica, what day was yours on? Yesterday. All right. Was you good to your mom? All right. <laughs> she said she expects you at the altar during the invitation. Amen. All right. All right, young lady. How old are you? Twelve. Mom, you realize that. Uh, Next year, she turns a teenager, and that's it. Blood shuts off to her head for the next 12 years. All right. Do I need to introduce you to any little boys or anything? You good? Okay. All right. Carly, how old are you? There it is. There it is. What I say? <laughs> That's what happens between 12 and 13, right there. Blood shuts off, and it's over with after that. 12 more years, Dad and Mom. 12 more years. Oh my. Do we need to introduce you to any little boys? They're all mean. All right, 12, 13, and Miss Monica. All right. Anybody else? A birthday, anniversary. How about anniversary this week? Anybody celebrate anniversary?
done as the choir comes down. Sort of mix and mingle, make a visitor's welcome, fellowship a little bit. Sing this one like we mean it too. Glory to His name. It's all about Him. Page 63. Verse number four, last verse, verse number four. Come to this fountain, the rich and sweet. And by for soul, let the Savior be. One can today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His 
graduates, but before we do that, a uh, couple things. Uh, first of all, um, as most of you know, uh, eh, probably a year or two ago, we... Um, um, hey, come here, little man. Um, a, cu- a couple of years ago, might be less than that, we um, started encouraging, actually, uh, we made a schedule for our... Um, Ushers and told them that um, th- that uh, in the morning services, now not necessarily in the evening service, and Wednesday night we don't, but on Sunday morning we we tell them, hey, if you're going to take up the offering and all of that, you gotta you gotta wear a coat and a tie. Do your best for Jesus and all of that. And uh, so here lately, some of our uh, little fellers um, have uh, started uh, dressing up, wearing a coat and tie. And uh, every time they do, I tell them to go back there, and I don't care what the schedule says. Uh, I tell them to uh, take up the offering and uh, man, get them started early. So uh, if you have a, a little feller like uh, Addison here, how old are you? What? A, Aiden. That's Addison. Why do I do that? I do that every time, Aiden. I don't think there's been a time that you've come up here that I hadn't called you by your sister's name. The preacher's getting old and decrepit. All right, Aiden. But Aiden, how old are you? Ten. Ten. And uh, Eli's done it. Uh, and I, how old's Eli? Ten. Ten. And uh, all. And I want to encourage them to. I mean, let's get them started young uh, and all. And uh, they have to go by the same same thing as the adults do. And uh, so I encourage them to do that. And, uh, hey, listen, you, you encourage these little fellers, too, uh, and all. We ought to do our best for Jesus. Say amen. And all. Thank you, Aiden. I cannot believe that. How many times have I done that? Three years, four years, five years, whatever. All right. Uh, Tim, if you'll come on up here, and then we'll do the graduates right after this. Anybody remember Billy Mitchum? Um, some of you remember him, some don't. We did have, there he is. Now, eight, eight years now, in, in memory of Billy, uh, Teresa has started a Billy Mitchum Memorial Teen Award. Uh, and I read what it says. It's in memory of Billy Mitchum and to honor an uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church team who has shown their love of Christ and Christian attitude in their daily lives. So for eight years now, every year, uh, Miss Teresa prays and she chooses one team uh, who, who fits this or who's seen this in their life the past year. And what it does is she pays for their camp trip each year. Uh, so this year, she's chosen uh, Mr. Caleb Correll. So Caleb, if you'll come on down. You can clap. It's okay. A man of few words. Thank you, Miss Teresa. I appreciate that. All right, where's my graduates at? Where are all? Come on, Daniel, y'all. Bless you. Andrew, Brittany, come on up here and line up across the front. There's Olivia. All right, let me give you a couple. Uh, 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 that are not able to be with us this morning. Uh, they have good, valid reasons. One, uh, Jerry is watching on the live stream. Uh, Jerry graduated from CVCC uh, with high honors, and I have to read it because it's got a long name. Applied Science Information Technology Computer Programming and Development with High Honors. That's a mouthful, but Jerry graduated from CBCC, and uh, he had the work today. He's actually, like I said, watching us uh, on the live stream. And then secondly, and uh, she's got a uh, very valid reason. She just had a baby a few weeks ago, 
and that's Brianna Barkley, and she graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from LR, and we'll make sure that they get uh, their uh, Bibles uh, here shortly, but wanted to go ahead and mention them. Andrew, did you uh, use your deodorant or something? You said no. Slidell uh, Baptist, what's the official name? Slidell Baptist Seminary, but he's also, um, uh, he's going to LR at the same time that he graduated uh, with his, uh, 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 what's it called, Associate of Theology, and also he'll graduate uh, from LR here shortly, a couple, couple years, next year, next year, so um, that's why when you see uh, a, a smaller Bible and all, you got to figure out which Bibles you're going to give them because you got high school and then uh, CVCC or or uh, two year and then four year and then graduate and all of that. So we gave him a uh, nice little uh, uh, New Testament that you'd fit in your back pocket and all of that. And then uh, we'll we'll take the big step when you graduate uh, from that. So. Uh, Thank you, Andrew. And Andrew will be preaching tonight, so you come and support him. He's announced his calling, and our job is to pray for him and to uh, support him. So, all right. And uh, Mr. Daniel Cahill, uh, he graduated uh, from CVCC, and you're going on to App State, right? All right. So he's got a couple more years, and you know what you want to do, or you? No kidding. Amen. Architecture. Praise the Lord for that. Hey, listen, they make good money, buddy. <laughs> hey, man, mama's a clapping on that one. Praise the Lord. All right. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe what we do is when he graduates with that couple years, he gets involved somewhere. Maybe he can design when we put a uh, expand, he can design all that. You reckon? Hey, man, that'd be good stuff. My buddy, Katie Hennefort. All right. Graduated from Newton Conover. Going Now, help me out with this. She's going to LR and CVCC. She get her Did y'all get all that? I heard thirty thousand dollars for four years. That's what I heard. <laughs> that saves mom money right there. That's what I'm thinking. Amen. Well, good stuff. And going to be a nurse. Amen. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Every one of these kids have got. All right, Brittany. Brittany has to help me too because. Let's see, your mama told me, and I done forgot. You graduate from CVCC this year, app next year, and app the third year. So she's getting a New Testament, and somehow or another, two year, then next year will be four year. And yeah, smart kids. I don't know this stuff. We went when I was in high school. You went to high school for how many years? Four, and then you went to college for how many? Four, and then you got your master's degree in two. Now they're saving money all over the place. All right, Olivia. Olivia has graduated from Appalachian State University and is gainfully employed at West Iredale. West, what is it? West Iredale Middle. Math, English, science, what? Math and English. So, <laughs> your mama elbowed her in the head. <laughs> you can't hit your mama when they're that old. They might, they're frail. <laughs> but, uh, amen. You know what? This is the future right here. This is a school teacher and and all of these going down through here and stuff. I mean, God, but here's the thing. We're in church. We're in church. That's the most important thing in all of it. So let's give them a hand.
good one. Amen. Where are you at, Alan? Hope this song will be a blessing this, uh, to you today. I was changing at the last minute this morning. But uh, Ronnie's been to fill in. I told this in earlier service. She's been to fill in today, and I had to be in too. Uh, somebody was getting messages to me and wanted to try taking her Sunday this morning. So hope this song will be a blessing to you. It's called By the Side of the Road. I've been traveling for Jesus for most of my life Over hills and valleys so long I've been tempted by the trials and troubles and strife Just to sit by the side of the road In the shadow of the journey when things seem so few I have cried for the Lord I believe I heard him walking in the cool of the day As he sits by the side of the road Just ahead is the sunset when Jesus will say No more work in the vineyard for you He will rock me to sleep in the cradle of time As I once had a hover of love When I move Across the river inside the home gate, I may look through a window of time. I may see a dear brother I've known on this way, sitting down by the side of the road. In the shadow of the journey, when friends seem so few, I have prayed for the Lord to be near. I believe. I sit by the side of the road. I sit by the side of the road. All right, if you have your Bible, Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I've preached from this passage before. Um, some of you may have that marked in your Bible and all of that. That's okay. This is a little bit different uh, in the fact of um, what we uh, are looking at this morning. I... Uh, as I told them in the early service, I think that one of the most important things that uh, Robin and I can do uh, as we look back over um, the 25 years that we've been married, we celebrate actually the dates on Tuesday of celebrating 25 years of marriage, that uh, uh, she's been the luckiest lady in the world. Or the most blessed, I think, is the lady. Let's be honest. I married, I married up, way up, uh, and all. But here's the thing. I think all of us would agree with this, that um, when you talk about marriage and you talk about things of that nature, one of the things that you automatically think about and look at is the, um, the children uh, of, of the marriage and, and those kind of things. And I think that each one of us would agree that it is important, of utmost importance, that we pass along to that next generation uh, the reality of, of some things or some things. I, as, as I said this morning, uh, I think it's incumbent upon us that we pass along uh, to our children that you have to have a good character. I mean, I, I think you ought to have a good character, don't you? I mean, uh, I think that uh, we ought to. I think that uh, not only that, but we ought to uh, teach our young people that uh, we ought to be men and women of our word, I, that we ought to uh, teach them a work ethic. We ought to teach them 
all of these things, and you ought to teach them the value of a dollar. You ought to teach them respect. You ought to respect for others, but respect for themselves. I, I, I think that that's, I mean, uh, th- that's important in life. But the most important thing that you and I can teach our children and the next generation is the reality uh, that there is a God, His Son is Jesus Christ, that He loves you and I, and that He wants to save everybody, all of us, and that He wants to take you to heaven when you die or He comes back. Fair enough? I mean, that, by, by all means, that's the most important thing that we can teach our children. And that the Bible is the foundation for faith and practice in our everyday life. That's the, that's the foundation. Now, if we teach that, if we teach that, and we teach that the Bible is, is, is the foundation for faith and practice, if we teach that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by Him, Jesus, then the rest of it will take care of itself uh, because the Bible teaches you how to, to, to deal with others, uh, how to have good character, and all of that. But now let me show you something that we did in the early service that made most people gasp. Um, do this for me. If you are 40 years old or older, would you raise your hand? All right? Hold them up real high. Hold them up real high. 40 years or older. Now put them down. Now, if you are 39 years old or younger, raise your hand. Look around at the difference. Hold them up real high. 39 and younger. Now put them down. Now watch this, 40 and older. You see the difference? Now if I understand the way that, that reality is, if I understand the way that things operate, the, the reality is, is that in 25 years from now, I, I'm going to be 73 years old. I'm not going to be uh, as agile. I'm not going to get around as well. I'm not going to. I'm still going to have life. I'm still going to do a lot of things. But let's face it: reality is, is I'm not 48 anymore. What's the? Ch- those of us that are 40 years old and older, we can go back and, and, and we can say, well, I remember when the church used to. I remember when we used to do it. But wait a minute. What's it going to be in 25 years when another 48-year-old is standing up here pastoring and can't go back and say, I, I remember when we used to. Better yet, will they even be able to stand behind this sacred desk? Think about that. Remember, we understand that it's important, it is of utmost importance, that we pass along what it is that God has done with us and for us and through us. You saw the difference in the 40 plus and the under 40. And by the way, if I would have done, the only reason why I did 40 and over and 40 and under is because if I do 30 and over and 30 and under, whoo, it is really bad. So let me ask you a question. Have we failed? Have we failed at the most important thing that we can do? which is pass on to the next generation the things that God has done with us, for us, and through us. Have we truly 
done what we were supposed to do. Yes, I believe we ought to teach our children to have good character, to be good uh, citizens, to be good people, to be all of those things. But in the, in the fairness of it all, or what we would call fairness, have we forgot the most important thing in life is not things. That the most important thing is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the problem is, is that if the... Tra- let, let me ask you a question. How many of you would, agree, would say that the trend is moving toward more people coming to church? No, it's not. So if that number is that far different now, what is it going to be like in five years? What's it going to be like in ten years? What's it going to be like in fifteen years? And what you see in Psalm 78 is where it is our responsibility to go to the next generation. And by the way, you'll see as we progress through this that this passage deals with three generations. My mother and father, me and my children, or to put it in the sense of this, it goes and in this way, me, my children, and their children. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 78, if you will, stand. Psalm 78, if you can. It says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments, and might not be, as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. I want to preach to you this morning good biblical advice. Good biblical advice. Let's pray. Father, we do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of life. Thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have already seen, our ears have heard. Thank you, Lord, for uh, our visitors today. We praise you for them and thank you, Lord, uh, for each one being here. Lord, we thank you for each regular that's here. I pray, Father, that each one of us would leave today knowing for sure that we're on our way to heaven. But also, Father, I pray that we would leave today committed to to sharing the Word of God with the next generation. If that's a parent with our children, if we're a grandparent with our grandchildren and our children. And Lord, if it's just someone that's here, may we realize, Father, that we have an obligation to the younger uh, folks, Lord, to teach them and to show them the ways in the Word of God. I pray, Father, that your Word would not return void, And Father, has already been prayed. I pray, Father, that you would save that sinner nearest hell. We love you and we thank you. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As I said earlier, it is incumbent upon every generation to teach and to train the next generation. How in the world are we to do that? Let me give you two things and then one that we'll close with. First of all, in order for us to teach and to train the next generation we have to have an openness to the truth. An openness to the truth. What do you mean by that? In other words, we have to be open to the Word of God. Let me make this statement before we go any further. This message is based on the, fa- on the foundational principle that the Bible is the Word of God. It is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. What I hold in my hand is not some book. It is the Holy Bible. 
It is what teaches me and trains me and leads me and guides me every day in faith and practice for you and I. So if you and I don't agree that the Bible is the Word of God, then we got nowhere to go at this point. So we must first understand that we must believe in that very principle because if we don't, then we can be and will be persuaded to be open to other things. I believe there are a lot of sincere people in this world that mean well in some of the things that they teach, but I also understand that if you want me to believe your opinion or your advice, it better be based upon the Word of God. Because if not, then it has to, you have to understand this, that I am opening myself up to what may be your opinion, or you may be opening yourself up to someone's opinion when we need to check everything through the Word of God. In other words, when I look into the Word of God, if you give me something that sounds good or I give you something that sounds good and it does not line up with the Word of God or goes contrary to the Word of God, guess who's right and guess who's wrong? I'm not the one that's right. God is, and that's based upon Psalm 119, verse number 89, where it says, Thy Word is forever settled. You and I need to understand that we must have an openness to the truth. In other words, when God says it, that settles it. If we are going to pass along to the next generation, I'm not talking about being narrow-minded. I'm not talking about being mean-spirited. But what I am saying to you and I is that we need to have the openness to to the Word of God and know the Word of God and study the Word of God so that when we are confronted by opinions or advice or things that are contrary to the Word of God, we automatically know and say, wait a minute, that doesn't line up with my Bible. I'm not going with that. Unfortunately, in this day and time, the reason why the, the generation that is underneath us, that to 40 and down, or better yet, really 30 and down, is that way is because they've been taught to do one thing, question everything. But you know what? It's okay if you question the Bible in the sense that I'm talking about, not in the sense that they are. Question it because you can find the answers to all of life's problems in the Word of God. You don't have to be afraid of that. I don't, I don't mind science I, when it teaches creation. I don't mind that. I, I can answer those. I can answer the dinosaurs. I can answer the thing about where did the Bible come from. We can answer all of that. We can answer God. We can answer about Jesus Christ and all of those things. But here's the problem. Most of us don't know the Bible well enough to answer and to be open to the truth because we're scared of it. We're scared of those things because we have not learned it well enough. We can tell you how to take apart a 65 Chevrolet. We can tell you how to take apart uh, an engine and put it back together and all of that, but we can't tell you the Word of God. We can tell you how to take an air conditioning unit apart, put it back together. We can tell you if we walk by uh, something and it not sound right, we can tell you how to fix all of that. We can tell you how to hook up the internet. We can tell you how to, uh, uh, or you can hand the, your phone to any five-year-old and then straighten it out for you. And they know all of that, but let me ask you a question. Have we taught them the Word of God? They're open to learning everything else. There are, and we've opened them up to all of these things, but you and I that know God through the Lord Jesus Christ must hear His Word, open ourselves to the truth, hear the Word of God, and obey the Word of God. If we don't know the Word of God, how can we pass it on to the next generation? How can I teach my children the Word of God when I don't know it? This past year in school, uh, or, or in the last few years of school, uh, pretty much 
they started bringing home math homework and stuff like that. And I look at it, and I ain't got a clue how to do it. I look at it, and I'm like, huh? I mean, they're over my head. Sometimes Robin will say, here, I, I need you to figure this out. And I'm like, hmm? I'm like a cat looks at a new gate. I have no clue how to do it. Matter of fact, if she looked at me and she says, listen, I need you to check their English homework. Ain't going to happen. I murder the English language. I don't know what, uh, uh, well, I don't even know what kind of an example to give because I don't even really know English very well. If you asked me to diagram a sentence, I'd be lost. If you asked me to tell you uh, what a difference between uh, this verb or that verb is, I, I don't know. I mean, if you asked me what a modifier was, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that stuff. So how in the world can I teach it? But wait a minute. You know why we're failing? It's because we don't know the Word of God. We've not been open to it. But not only are we open to the truth, but secondly, we have an obligation to the truth. It's our responsibility. It's our obligation. We are obliged to do it. Have you, let me ask you a question. Do you want your kids to be successful as a Christian? Well, the answer to that, to anybody with any sense, is absolutely, preacher. I want them to do well. I want them to be a successful Christian. I want them to be Christ like. I want them to do these things. Then you and I need to be open to the truth, but we also need to have an obligation to the truth. And that is our responsibility to help them, but not only help them, but to train them. In other words, what are you doing to train to fulfill your obligation to the truth? Look at what he said in the Scripture. If you will, look down at verse number 4. It says, We will not hide them from their children. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. In other words, don't hide the truth from them. The good and the bad. You know what? Serving Christ, I've had some dark days. Not because of, of, of God being mean or mean-spirited or things like that. But there's been times in the valley that I've been in that, he, listen, I've learned some of my greatest lessons in life in the valley. In the darkest of times is when I've learned that. And unfortunately, in this day and time, there's a lot of people that are perpetrating a fraud in Christian beliefs, or what they call Christian beliefs, that as long as you're saved, everything's going to be just fine. Everything's going to go all right. You're going to get $1,000 checks in the mail. Your every day's going to be rosy, and nothing ever comes in wrong to a Christian's life. How many of you are saved and have had bad experiences? Look around. Now, either those people on TV are lying through their teeth to you, or we're just bad Christians. By the way, you know me, and I know you, and we know each other, and we're not bad people and bad Christians. Here's my point. You've got to share with the next generation the good and the bad. You have to say, listen, sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes things happen that you can't explain. Sometimes you, 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 one day uh, you're, you're on cloud nine and everything's going all hunky-dory and everything's wonderful and great. And the next day uh, uh, you, come, you get the, the, the seat knocked out from underneath and you fall flat on your face. You're as saved as the next person. You've trusted Christ as your Savior. And all of a sudden, bam! And you're in the midst of a storm, and you're in the midst of a valley. 
And it's incumbent upon us that we tell the other generation that, you know what, sometimes bad things happen. We've got people walking around nowadays, their kids want nothing to do with Jesus because they think it's always... Hey, listen, it is always because I know the Lord Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, and if I draw my last breath, I'm going to heaven. But the reality is that sometimes bad things happen, don't they? And we need to teach our children that sometimes life does happen, and God does bring you to the storm, and God does bring you in the storm, and God does bring you out of the storm. And that's because that's why He says there, in verse number 4, he says that we're not going to hide it, but then he says, Show unto the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. You want to know when you see the greatest strength in the Lord a lot of times? It's way down here in the valley. I mean, I'm, I'm like the next person. I love running the ridges. I love when everything's going great. Man, I love it when you can just sit back and, and admire the beauty of God's handiwork. But I'm going to tell you right now, that does not happen all of the time. But I'm telling you, man, when you're down in the valley and you don't know which way to turn and it's so dark and it doesn't seem like there's a light and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes by and that sweet Spirit speaks to your heart and there's that little light in the distance to give you a direction to go and you head toward it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and He begins to show His hand and He begins to show His strength as it says there and His wonderful works that He hath done. That's my friend when it gets good. He's bringing you out of that. It's not always in the valley. It's not always in the thing. And you and I have an obligation to the truth. Tell them, man, sometimes it is great running the ridges, but sometimes you're down in the valley. And don't be afraid to share with the generation to come. Don't be afraid to share with the younger people about how good God's been. Don't be afraid to tell them how things have happened in your life. Don't be mum on the subject. I mean, listen, if my ball team won the national championship, don't you think for one minute I'd wear my tie, I'd wear my blue shirt, I'd wear my blue suit, I'd be walking around here like the big chicken in the yard, I'd be strutting around and all of that. Well, listen, why in the world don't we strut around? I'm not talking about in a bad way, but I'm talking about strutting around and saying how good God is and how good God's been to us with our children. Why do we not do that? We have an obligation to do that. I mean, he goes on. For well, he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Hey, you've got to tell them. You've got to tell them. You have an obligation, mom and dad. That means you, you, you sit here and you want your kids to have a higher spirituality than you do. Why don't you just step up to the plate? Why don't you just find yourself in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night? Oh, preacher, you don't understand. I'm tired on Wednesday nights. Well, welcome to the crowd. We're all like a bunch of hamsters. We jump on the wheel in the morning. We fall off at night. We fall in the bed. We get up in the morning. We jump right back on that wheel. Do it all over again. It's like a bunch of hamsters. Sadly, that's the way that we are. But we still have an obligation. Don't shirk your responsibility. Because let me close with this. He says that we have to have an openness to the truth. You've got to open yourself up. If I open the window, I want what to come in? Air, fresh air. If I open myself up to the Word of God, I want it to come in. Secondly, I have an obligation to the truth. I've got to do it. God commanded us to do it. Anything less to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. You've got to do it. It's an obligation. But listen, he gives us in the last couple of verses the opportunities presented by the truth. Look at verse number 6. That the generation to come might know them. 
even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. In other words, my children don't like this, but here's the thing. Well, we've got three generations here. We've got Robin's dad declared them to his daughter, his daughter, I was going to say, made a wise choice in who you marry. No amen. Amen. That was a pitiful amen, brother. She gave me a pitiful one. But watch. Jimmy instilled into Robin the things of God. Preaching, teaching, all of that. And now, she went out and she definitely married a hunk of a feller. A hunk of what? You stole my thunder, brother. A hunk of what? We're not sure. But now, we are raising Lindsay and Caleb and Joshua. Now, the Bible says if Robin and I will teach them, they will teach their children. But the real illustration this morning is Jimmy and Linda taught Robin, and Robin teaches her children. So if we're having trouble right now with the place that church has, is it really the younger generation's fault? No. It's those of us that raised our hand and there was the most. Now listen, the younger generation still has an obligation. But still yet, if we would do our jobs, if we would do our obligation and our openness, it tells us that they will teach their children. In other words, we will teach our children, they will teach their children. Seven tells us that, look, look at verse seven. The second thing, opportunity that you have, they'll teach their children. The second opportunity, that they might set their hope in the world. It's not what that says. That they might set their hope in God. What does the world have, what does the, the world system now put their hope in? Money, fame, uh, position, uh, neighborhood, uh, job. That's what they put their hope in. What does, the, what does the Bible say? And what's that old uh, uh, hymn? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Then what's the, what's the chorus? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. In other words, if we will follow through with the openness and realize our obligation, then you and I can stand back as we're continuing our openness and obligation and see the opportunities fulfill themselves and our kids will not place their hope in the world system and all that it has, but they'll place their hope in Jesus Christ. Oh, if they do that, preacher, they'll be paupers. They won't have any money. They won't be able to do nothing. They won't have a job. They'll join a poor house and all these things. But my God shall supply all your need. He'll take care of you. How many of you want to be right dead square in the middle of God's will? Do you realize that in God's will is the best place to be? That might be that you come out to be uh, uh, like Daniel uh, Cahill back here, an architecture. God wants him to be an architect. It might be to, to like uh, the Brianna Barkley that's had a little girl, uh, little girl, little boy, little girl, little girl, little girl, and, uh, and, and uh, in school, going to be a nurse. Might be a policeman. Might grow up to be a Michael Hicks. 
He's not here. Is he here? Oh, he took Michael Jr. out. There we go. I mean, it could be, it could grow up to be anybody. But you want them to be what God wants them to be. That's the most important thing. And put your hope in Jesus Christ. You teach them, and they'll teach your children. They put their hope. Let me quickly give you three more. Look at the last part of verse number 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. We have the opportunity. If we will do our job and be open to the truth and fulfill the obligation of the truth, then the opportunity presented by the truth is that they'll not forget the works of God. In other words, they're less likely to stray, less likely to get out and wander. In other words, you and I need to fulfill our openness and obligation to the truth so that they have the opportunity to not forget about the works of God. Because how sad it is, we probably could go around and people could give testimony of people that grew up in church and mom and dad got out of church. Something made them mad, something got mad, something did this, something did that, whatever. You fill in the blank. And now they're not in church. And their kids have gone off the deep end. They don't want nothing to do with church. They don't want nothing to be about church. They want nothing. Nothing. Nothing to do with church. Not only that, number four, last part of seven says, and, for, and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. How important it is that we follow the Word of God. How important it is that we teach them the Word of God. How important it is that we fulfill our obligation to the truth, to know the commandments and to know the Word of God. And then verse number eight really condemns us. Look at it. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. If we will follow and be open to the truth, and fulfill our obligation to the truth. And they'll have the opportunity not to follow in the footsteps of those that have been stubborn and rebellious toward God. I don't know about you, but I see it as an awesome responsibility to pass on Jesus to the next generation. I see it as an, a huge responsibility that you and I have. You say, preacher, I don't have any kids. There is a younger generation that we have an obligation to. You say, preacher, they're not my kids. We have an obligation to the younger generation. Would we take that seriously today? Would we obey God in all areas? You may be here this morning and you say, Preacher, be honest with you and honest with God. I, I've never even accepted Christ as my Savior. Let me say this. The greatest decision you can ever make is to trust Christ as your Savior. Because in all areas of your life, from that point forward, you have a steady hand to hold on to. The truth. The truth. And I want to encourage you, if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, today is that day. God makes no mistakes. You're not here by luck. You're not here by chance. You're here today to be saved. No other reason. So, preacher, I come because my co-worker uh, kept hammering me, and finally I just said, listen, I'll come if you'll be quiet. 
that might be what you thought. But God had another plan. God wanted you here to hear how much He loves you and cares for you. And that He'll save you right now. Christian, you're here today. How committed are you? Are you open to the truth? Do you feel that obligation to the truth? Because your kids really need those opportunities. And it hinges on you. Will you do that this morning? Father, we love you. We thank you for your love.